Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. I had started a project and I decided that I should start recording so that you can follow along if you wanted to do something similar. I watched a video recently from um, Lolly Mill and I'll put a link down below, but she was making her art journal, I think for this year. And I had made one a couple of years ago and I have it at the other studio. I haven't worked in it very much because I made it too big for my very first one. And so it's intimidating. And uh, the pages are probably twice this big. I'm not sure what size paper I used to start with, but they're they're large. And so I decided, I saw her video and decided to watch it and went ahead and started making this one. I wanted to go ahead and do a video of my own because I did my spine a little bit different and I'm going to be doing the way I finish it a little bit different. And I, I want to do that on camera um, for myself to remember what I did and then just to share it with you in case you wanted to do something like that. This is just going to be a really private place for me to practice things and play so that I can become more confident and just enjoy myself and not kind of feel pressured to to have it be perfect. So the thing that I liked, um, and, and it's what I did in my the one that I have at the other studio, I don't even have a cover on it, uh, but I am going to do a cover like kind of like she did on this one, is... The fact that you can lay it out flat no matter what you're working on. So, you know, this is the front of the book, but if I decide that I want to work here and I have this big gap, it, it won't lay flat. So this one, you can just, you know, throw the pages over there. And no matter where you're working, you have a nice flat work surface. You know, you'll just adjust. So I like that idea about this book. And then... Also, she, I think the one that she made, she said she liked to use 300 GSM watercolor paper, but she didn't have any or something, so that's not what she used. She used mixed media paper, I think. And I actually had both. So I, I've put together this one um, just with this watercolor paper that I purchased probably either at Walmart or at Michael's, um, but it's, I think, a common brand. So, um, you know, I just took these pages out. I like how nice and thick and heavy they are. They'll be able to hold a lot of different mediums. So, you know, I just took this out, trimmed it, uh, trimmed this off with my guillotine just to make a nice uh, clean cut. And then because this is so thick, you do need to use a scoreboard or something to uh, fold it in half. The other paper that I have is this Canson Mixed Media Paper, and I think this is what I used. It's 11 by 14, 90 pound um, mixed media paper. I guess that's 160 GSM. And I, I really like this one. I think this is what I did my other one with. It's obviously thinner paper. Um, so I have some of this cut also. I think my original one was this folded in half so you can see it makes kind of a longer journal. So I use maybe more like a quarter for a page on, on the other ones that I cut. So I, I took that larger paper, um, cut it in half one way and then folded it. So I, I ended up with this size. And this is what I'm gonna play with today just to show you um, the stitching. I don't know if I'm doing it correctly. I'm doing it a little bit differently than she did. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and put it on camera so that I will remember how I did it. So again, if you're gonna use the watercolor paper, you see this is really thick. So this doesn't tear off as easily. So I'm gonna use my guillotine really quick and just cut that. Okay, so I've cut off that edge, nice clean cut. And then I am going to use my scoreboard. I also have a little small one. You can use any one that you have. If you don't have a scoreboard, uh, even just using a ruler with some kind of bone folder or something just to create that mark that you need. This one I know is 12 inches. So I'm gonna make a nice score at the six inch mark just to get my fold started. And because this paper is so thick, I'm actually gonna do both sides. That just kind of helps get my fold.
Okay, so I had these and I decided I was going to do 12 of these. When I did my 12, uh, normally you would take your, your folios and you would, you know, put one inside the other and decide how many, you know, you want into a signature. So this is a signature. If you're brand new and you're making a book, when you, when you take a piece of paper and fold it in half, that's a folio. You put multiple folios together and you have a signature and then you put multiple signatures together. I'm gonna do, in this case, I think three. Let's do four because that's how many, well, no, let's do three. I'll need to cut another one to do my stitching. Um, and then when you put them together, you're gonna to be creating your book. So I'm gonna do three. I need to cut another um, sheet of this. Okay, so I have my two smaller pieces and I'm gonna go ahead and score those also. And they are 11, so I'm gonna do it at five and a half. I guess I'm not in frame there. And this is much thinner paper, so it's going to fold a lot easier. And again, five and a half. Okay, that way I can do, let's see, one, two, three. Okay, so I have three with three signature, uh, three folios in each signature, and I'll just save that one for later. This will just get me into the, being able to show you the stitching that I did. Okay, so I wanted I wanted it to lay flat, and when I did this one and tried to put one signature inside another, it was just so thick that I, my pages were not going to lay as flat as I wanted. Um, when, like I said, when she did the demo that I watched, she was using mixed media paper, so it was easier to put those together and have them kind of uh, stay nice and snug. So I'm going to work with this one. I think it'll just be easier to work with. So, the next thing you need to do is to punch your holes. And I really liked uh, how she did it. There's, you can do any number of holes that you want. You know, you can do, a lot of times when I'm binding something, I'll do five holes. I'll, you know, one here, one here, one here, and then kind of in the middle here. But for this type of stitching, I really liked how it looked. Um, if, if you've watched any of my Elocutionist series, I really liked how I left the spine exposed. I did cover up right where my, you know, uh, the stitching or something was. I think there wasn't even any stitching in this one because I did it all uh, using tape. But I wanted to cover, you know, just some decoration. So I'm kind of doing this, a similar thing here with this one is I decided I wanted, I liked how she put three holes together, and then three together in the center and then three together at the end for, um, this is called a kettle stitch. And so I, I liked that. Her, on hers, she has threads that go here also, but it re did reduce having them inside to have them on the outside. I just kind of wanted a little bit cleaner look. So I have my stitching on the inside at the three spots, if you can see that and then just on those three spots on the outside with nothing in between. So that's how mine is different. Um, and then how I treat this afterwards, I want to be different too. So that's why, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do, do it on camera. Um, now we're gonna take these and do the same thing with you know three holes together. So this is a much shorter spine, but I think it's still gonna look nice. So. To do this, you, I'll take one, and I can do these one page at a time, uh, or, you know, to me it's kind of easier, especially if you're not needing to do it exact, but I'm going to try to do it exact. So you could take one, and for your uh, punching, I'm just using, I have this recycled um, material, and I actually even just keep a little pin with a nice big head on it if I wanted to use this to punch but I do have a pokey tool 
Um, so if you don't have, this is just from, you know, recycled um, packaging that I kept and, and I have a couple of these and they work out great for this sort of thing. You can see where I've been punching. Uh, or you can just fold up a towel uh, just so that you have something soft underneath to punch. And that is kind of the down and dirty cheap, you know, if you don't have any tools way to do it. But then I also have this that I love. It's We Are Memory Keepers and it's a, from a book binding kit. So this gets me um, exact accuracy. I've shown this before. This came with my little punchy tool and also, uh, which is floating around here somewhere. Okay, so it also came with this little pokey tool and some needles and the some wax thread and different things. I just kind of keep everything in for book binding in a little cigar box. So uh, I just need this for this portion. And the way this works, it, it will do um, binding that is in the spine. There's a little kind of a V. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a little V shape along the bottom here. So in this one, you can see it has that same kind of V. You would, when you're going to punch holes in the spine, you're going to use this side. There's also a little booklet with some fancy Japanese binding techniques that are really decorative. And on that is where you, you put your holes here on the, fr on the front and back. So you lay it so that it's here flat. So we're gonna use the one that's at the angle. And you just wanna line that up. And you can do these, you know, in fact, maybe I'll do that just to show you the two ways, is I'll make my first one, um, just one page here to get my holes and then I'll just lay them on top of each other on that other pad. That'll probably be faster than um, loading this every time, uh, which is what I did for my the watercolor one, paper one. So I'm just gonna get my initial marks. Again, you could just use a ruler and, and measure off. So I'm not, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not really centered. There are holes that don't have a circle around them and then alternating, they have a black circle around them. That's just to help you visually, you know, be able to see your holes and stay where you want, you know, where you want to be. I've got a center one here with a black circle and I'm off on this one. So if I want to use those, it's better if I visually center it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this up just a little bit so that I am kind of there. That's close enough, okay? So get these tightened down. So as you can see, I used a clear hole here and the clear hole here, and I just centered between those two. So I'm not up against this, but at least my holes, it'll be visually easier for me to see. So I need to then also find the center. Because this book is so small, on the other ones I alternated, which kept them this far apart. I could do that, or I can even maybe just do three close together. I think I'll go ahead and do the far apart one, just because. So uh, I'm gonna do one, two, three, using alternate holes. I'm gonna do the same thing here, one, two, three. And then, as you'll notice, I didn't have anything soft underneath. This has a thickness and a solid bottom. So this is only going to go through so far and it won't hurt my table. And then I need to find the center. So let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it puts me on a clear hole actually. So that's fine. I'm just gonna alternate there on either side. Okay, so now I have my holes. And you can see they're all nice and even. So now I can just use this as a template uh, and then just use this pad also. And then just take my other two. And you can use clips if you want to be really accurate. to make sure they don't move or giant paper clips or anything. 
And then I'm just gonna use that and go through again. Okay, I have one, two, and three. Okay. So these I'm gonna stitch together just to show you the way that I did the kettle stitch. And you can see my holes are all lined up nice and even. Okay, so I need to thread a needle. Uh, I have a little on this one. The other kind of way that reason that I liked this is I didn't have to have too long of a thread to do this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a new one though because I don't think this is gonna be enough. And I'm just using um, a needle. The needle that came with the kit that I had ended up breaking. I was really doing something tough. So I just took um, a needle, if you have a cruel needle, uh, you can buy needles that come in like a, an assortment that have like the curved needle and that sort of thing. But some of them are too big if you get like a cruel needle. The ones I had with the blunt tip, it, it was too big. I don't want this big of a thing going through my holes. So I took just a, another large eyed needle. It's not as large as the other one. And so I took uh, one that was okay size, but it had a sharp point. And the thing about a book binding needle is you don't want it to have a sharp point because you don't want it to split your threads. Uh, it, it's really hard to tighten up your, your stitches if you do that. So I just took a regular needle and then I used really sturdy nippers um, to, to clip off the tip and then just sanded it down so it's not sharp anymore. It's not as sharp as the other one. So I, I don't have that problem of splitting my threads. The other thing that you can do is to wax your threads. Uh, you can buy wax thread, but sometimes maybe those are, this is for like jewelry waxed cord, which is nice if, you know, I, I've got some in colors to do some nice exposed um, stitching. And the wax thread is really nice because it helps you to grip, uh, but you don't have to do that. You can use embroidery thread, embroidery floss. A lot of times what I will do is use button thread is heavier or upholstery thread. Um, this one's button craft again. Um, and this is again, some more beading cord, just something heavier, heavier than regular sewing thread. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this and you can wax it or not. This is just a little plastic thing that has a, a little wax wheel in it. Um, or you could use, you know, you maybe you have a be beeswax tea light or something, you can just use that. But this is also something that you find in Sewing Notions. So I'm gonna just grab a length of this. And then if I wanna run it through here to wax it, I'm right-handed, is just take your thread and then just pull it through the wax little circle. It just helps to, as you're uh, tightening, tightening your pages, to, it, it gives it just a tiny little bit of grip. Okay, and then I'm gonna just pull this all the way to the end so that my thread's doubled. And then this is a knot I learned from my grandmother. I've seen, you know, everybody kind of ties their knot at the end a little bit different. I've seen ones, but I've never perfected it where you, you do something and you slide it down. I learned this way. I'm just gonna pull that between my, oops, pull that between my fingers, roll it around and just kind of twist it in between my fingers and then pull it down. And then I end up with a knot. That to me is just the easiest way. And then I'm gonna trim it as close to as I can. Okay, now on my first one, the, the way that I'm gonna do this different is instead of going all the way down, I'm going to add my signatures across this way and then I'll move down and do them across with the knot on the top. Going through the first hole, come up through the middle hole, and then I'm going to grab in between those two threads that knot. 
and pull that tight. And now my knot is in the middle, okay? And then I have one stitch on the inside. So now I'm gonna go to the bottom hole of that top section, pull it all the way through, and then come back up through the middle hole. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of hold that tension, make a little knot sort of by coming from behind. We're going to call this behind. Come up between those both threads with my this thread underneath my needle. And it's going to just kind of create a little loop. And that's going to kind of hold my tension. Okay, then I'm going to pull up the next signature. Find the middle with my fingers. You can clip these together if that's easier for you. I find this works okay just holding it, but you could, um, I would clip it like this so that you're, you're open in your next one. Okay. And then you're gonna take your thread. Now you're gonna go, because I'm in the middle, I'm gonna go through from the top the middle hole. Okay, and then I'm going to come back up again through the top hole. And again, I want to create that sort of knot for my tension. So I'm going to go, this is maybe hard to do with this on here. I'm going to go under those two, again from behind. I'm going to go under those two. The first one's always hard for some reason. Okay, I have my needle there. I want to make sure this thread is under my needle. And it's going to create that little loop that holds the tension. Okay. And you, I don't want to pull this too tight. I think I pulled my other one a little too tight. And uh, it made my threads kind of go at an angle. So I'm going to try to do this one a little more loose and see what happens. Okay. So then now I want to go and create that thread along the top here because I have my stitch here. So I'm going to go down through the center hole again. And I'm going to come up through the bottom hole. And again, I want to create that, that little knot. So I'm going to come from behind under those two, again with my threads underneath the needle. And it's going to create that little loop. Oops. And just kind of pull that tight. Okay, so now I have a stitch here and a stitch here. And I have one here, I need to create one here, but I'm not gonna go through again because I am I need to add the next signature. So I'm just going to pull this over and I'm gonna go do the same thing. I'm gonna go under the two threads from that center one. Again, threads under here and create that little tension kind of knot. And it's not really a knot, it's just like a half a knot, but it just helps me kind of hold that um, tension there okay so and then I'm going to add my next one now again I don't know if this is officially how you're supposed to do the stitch but you can find other videos um, maybe they're more confident but I, I liked how this came out so I wanted to share it so I got that tension and I'm going to go through the center again and it made kind of this little diamond shape. I'm going to go up to the end. And this is why it's easier. It's kind of created that little diamond shape. So you can grab those two threads a little easier. So I'm going to go again. I'm going to grab these threads. Go under those threads. Make sure this is underneath. Oops. Got caught on my first knot. Okay, and I'm gonna pull that, but not too tight. And then I'm gonna go back through the center. Up through the bottom. Grab that, both of those threads. Make sure my thread's underneath and pull. Okay, so I can keep adding now 
more um, more signatures onto this. I don't have any made up right now, uh, but that's basically how you do it. And then I would go up to the center here. I didn't do that one. So I have to go up to the center and just grab these to make my knot. So if I was to the very end, I'm gonna keep adding more to this. If I was to the very end, uh, however many signatures I wanted to do, actually, if I do, oh no, that is supposed to be at the center, okay. If I was to the very end, I would just tie off a couple more knots and then clip that. So then I have a knot here and a knot here. So that's kind of what I ended up with. So I, I could add as many as I want here. And then I would start on the center one, do the same thing, and then do the bottom one and same thing. And then you have your, um, you have your book together. So I'm going to continue on this at another time. But I like how, just how nice and clean that ended up looking. Okay, so I'm putting that aside, and next I'm on to the next step of this one. And uh, I think I'll stop here for this video so that you can get caught up to this point because I want to prepare my materials for my, uh, and kind of think about what I want to do for my cover. So um, get, your, get your base of your book together if you want to do this with me, and I will see you next time. Now go make something. Bye.